Yo, yo, yo! It's your boy, Mr. G. And here's our video for 1.3 part 2, subtracting integers. So the first thing we need to know about subtracting integers is we have to know what the opposite of a number is. It's our key term for this particular lesson. Opposite of a number is the number on the other side of zero. That should be on the other side of zero. See, I catch my typos while we're recording. So that's on the other side of zero and has the same distance from zero. Okay, so when we're talking about, if I'm looking at the opposite of four, well, it'd be the number on the other side of zero, which would be that's the same distance from zero, which is negative four. So it's the same number, just the opposite sign. Okay, subtracting integers. So here are our rules for subtracting integers. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to do what's called adding the opposite. So with adding the opposite is, for step one, we always keep the first integer. Okay, so that doesn't stay this, that doesn't change. What we are going to do is we are going to change our subtraction symbol to an addition symbol. So right away, when I go from 8 minus 11, when I just change to 8 plus 11, I've completely changed the problem. I have to change something else. Okay, so that was only step two. So I changed it from subtraction to addition. Well, if I change it from subtraction to addition, I then have to change the next integer. So I have to change the value of the second number to its opposite. So because this is a positive 11, I have now, now have to make this a negative 11. So I'm adding the opposite sign. Okay, so this eight minus 11 becomes eight plus negative 11. And then now I can use my rules of addition that we've already learned in order to solve this problem. So now I look, okay, are they the same sign or are they different signs? Well, I have different signs here, so that means I must subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the bigger number. So my answer is negative 3. Now let's look at another reason why that would make sense. If I did 8 minus 11, because that was the original problem, right? So my original problem, let me erase this, was 8 minus 11. Well, if we were to look at a number line, if I were to start here at 8 and I were to subtract 11, when we subtract, we move left on the number line. So I'm going to go left 11 times. Well, I'm going to go all the way to 0, which is going 8 times, and then I'm going to have to go 3 more times because that would make it 11 spaces. So I would get there that way as well. Okay, let's look at another. We'll do multiple examples together, then I want you to try some on your own. So if I have negative 3 minus negative 5, so now I have a minus a negative. So we're going to add the opposite by changing this subtraction symbol to an addition symbol. And then I'm also going to change the sign of the second number. So because this is negative, I'm going to change this to a positive. So it's really negative 3 plus positive 5 is what I just changed it to. And now I have to follow my rules from addition. So now i got to look at it. Do I have the same sign or do I have different signs? Well, I have a negative and a positive that I'm adding. So that means I'm going to subtract the numbers, keep the sign of the larger number. 5 is bigger than 3, so therefore it is positive 2. Okay. Look at this one, 19 minus negative 19. So a lot of people right away are just go, oh cool, I'm, it's positive 19, I'm subtracting negative 19, so that means it's zero. No, that is not necessarily correct. So let's, uh, it's definitely not correct. Let's look at why. Let's add the opposite. So I'm gonna change it to an addition. I'm gonna add, change this to addition, and then I'm gonna add the opposite sign. So because this is negative 19, I'm now gonna make this a positive 19. Another way to look at this is what's called keep change, change. Okay, keep change, change. We keep the sign of the first number, we change the subtraction to addition, and then we change the sign of the second number. Keep, change, change. That's another quick way to always describe adding the opposite. So really I just have 19 here plus 19. So that's minus a negative really becomes a positive. So 19 plus 19 is 38. Okay, 19 plus 19 is 38, and I'm done. Okay. Now, uh, go ahead and go ahead and try these ones. See how you do. Okay, you can pause and try all four of them right now, actually, if you feel comfortable. If not, maybe watch one of them and then try three of them. Okay, but try them, see how it goes, 
and then you can pick up from there and we'll, we'll check our answers and check our work. All right, so negative seven minus two for number four. So negative seven minus two. So again, I'm gonna always do this by adding the opposite. So if I choose to add the opposite, I'm gonna change this to an addition symbol. But if I change this to addition, that means I have to change the sign of the second number. This was positive, so now it is negative. So I kept the first number, sign of the first number, changed the subtraction to addition, and then I changed the positive 2 to a negative 2. So it's negative 7 plus negative 2. So now I have to follow my rules of addition. So I'm looking at, do I have the same sign or different signs? Well, they're the same, so that means I'm going to keep the sign, so my answer has to be negative, because when I add two negative numbers, my answer is a negative number. And then I just add the number, 7 plus 2 is 9. So I got a negative 9. Okay, let's look at number 5. So for number five, I have negative one minus negative three. So guys, whenever we have a double negative here, I call it double negative because I have minus a negative. A minus a negative always just becomes plus a positive. So one trick you can do is just combine those two negative signs and make one big positive sign with those parentheses symbols. So this is really negative one plus three. That's what I did, I added the opposite. Change this to addition, change this one to positive. So it's negative one plus positive three like this. Now I look, same sign or different signs, I have different, so I subtract, and I keep the sign of the bigger number, and now I'm exact. See, I'm a poet. All right. Now, why, while we're rhyming, we might as well make a joke for you guys. So, why should you never talk to pi? So, why should you never talk to pi? because he's gonna go on forever. So it's gonna go on and on forever. Zing! All right, moving on. So now I'm gonna clear these so I have room for six and seven. So for number six, I have three minus five. Now, I wanna show a couple ways to look at this, so please make sure you're watching. So first of all, I always could do keep, change, change, or also known as add the opposite. So I could keep, change, change, keep the three, change this to an addition symbol, and then this is a positive five, so now it is a negative five. That works. Now I have my rules of addition. So I look to see, are these the same sign or different signs? Well, they are different. So I know my answer is negative. I'm gonna put that in the box and write that down so I don't forget it, because negative five is bigger than three, so therefore I have more negatives than positives. But I'm also gonna do five minus three, to get two when I subtract, because whenever we have different signs, we subtract and we get negative two. That's one way to look at this. So we know the answer is negative two. Let me show you another way. Another way is you could just actually look at it whenever we just have a subtraction symbol and we don't have this double negative. I could look at this here as, okay, cool, I have three positives right here. Okay, because we know this is a positive number without a negative sign in front. And then the negative sign can carry with it. And I have five negatives. So I have positive three, negative five. When I combine that, how many do I have left? And this is going back to that model. I have three positives. I have five negatives. So therefore, I have two negatives left over. Okay, and when we added the opposite, that's essentially what we did. Okay, but we could also, when there's just that subtraction symbol there, we could just look at it as if that is a negative five as well if we wanted to. Now, if that just really, really confused you, ignore it. Don't worry about it. It's not something that we have to look at, um, but it is sometimes a trick and visually better for some people. So I wanted to make sure I showed that to you. Okay, last but most certainly not the least, negative 8 minus negative 4. So negative 8 minus negative 4, I have this double negative. I have to keep change, change. So I'm going to keep negative 8 change this to addition, and change this to a positive four, so it becomes negative eight plus four. And a quick little trick is remember, if it's a double negative, just make it one big positive, so it's really negative eight plus four. All right, and now I follow my rules of addition. Because they're different signs, I'm gonna subtract and keep the sign of the bigger number. Negative eight's bigger, so I know it's gonna be negative. Eight minus four is four. So I should've gotten negative four. All right, so I hope this helped. 
Um, let's talk about things to remember real quick. So one important thing to remember is keep, change, change. Or we also can remember to always add the opposite. Okay, and if we need to show an example of that, show an example of that. So we can do a big example of what keep, change, change means or what add the opposite means. So what I mean by that is you could have keep, change, change. If I had the, if I had the problem, let's say 3 minus, uh, let's go 9. So 3 minus 9, so I'm going to keep the 3, change this to addition, and change this to negative 9. Keeping the first number, changing the subtraction to an addition symbol, and then changing the sign of the second number to its opposite. And that is the same thing as adding the opposite sign. Okay? Alright guys, hopefully this video helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. Greetings out.